Hey what's going on guys then my for simple snippets and welcome back to a new video tutorial under digital electronics and today we're going to be looking at a 3 bit asynchronous up counter so in the previous couple of videos of this entire digital electronics playlist we've been talking about counters and if you don't know what counters are you can check out the previous two videos because in that video we've taken a theoretical as well as a practical understanding of what counters are at a very basic level this topic is going to cover the 3 bit asynchronous up counter as the title of the name suggests so as you can see on the screen we are going to be taking a look at the circuit diagram we are going to be taking a look at the truth table and we are also going to see the entire clock cycle diagram and we'll understand how this 3 bit asynchronous up counter will count eight values starting from 0 to 7 and as the name suggests it is asynchronous in nature so you can see that the clocks of the three different jk flip flop that we are using over here in this assembly are separate so we have the first clock clk the second clock is provided by the output of q of a and the third clock which goes to the third or the c flip flop over here is coming from the output of the b flip flop okay also since this is a up counter it is going to count up values that is it is going to start from 0 and it will go till 7 that is it will start from smaller value and go to the larger value okay and also as you can see on the screen it is a negative edge triggered jk flip flop So we are using a JK flip flop. You can also use D or T flip flop, but we are using a JK flip flop. This is negatively edge triggered, which means that at every negative edge, the flip flop will be activated. We've already talked about JK flip flop edge triggering and different scenarios in this entire playlist. So I hope you are already acquainted with all those concepts. And with that being said, let's start off with today's topic. So since there is a three bit asynchronous counter, it will be counting two raised to three, which is eight values. and it since it is a 3 bit counter we are using 3 jk flip flops right so let's start off with the clock cycle diagram and we'll understand the truth table later on from the clock cycle diagrams so starting off with the j and k inputs of all the three flip flops as you can see they are connected to positive 1 so j is 1 and k is 1 and remember when j and k values are 1 in a jk flip flop we get that toggle state right so as soon as the clock goes down that is at the negative edge so in, on the screen you can see i've already marked the negative edges so during these negative edges the flipping or the toggling is going to happen and we are going to track qa qb and qc right so starting off with the first flip flop qa because it is the first one that comes in the arrangement and then that qa the output of qa is provided as a clock to qb so later on we'll see qb and then we'll see qc so starting off with qa let's start off qa with 0 so let's say initially the value of qa is going to be 0 that's what we are assuming so till the first negative edge so i have named the cycle 0 1 2 3 till 7 so till the first negative edge that is this one over here qa is going to be zero right but as soon as this first negative edge of the clock happens so this is the clock we are talking about so this clock signal is exactly equal to this right so with the first negative edge qa is going to get toggled so it is going to go to high from zero right because we are getting that toggle state so if this is zero that this line is zero then this is going to be one and now it is going to stay high till the next negative edge of the clock right so till here it is going to stay high because this is the second negative edge of this clock which is going to the first flip flop a again the clock signal is going to drop and it's going to stay low till the next negative edge then again go high and this is going to keep on continuing at every negative edge so let me just complete the entire graph okay so this was qa right now notice that the output qa of the first jk flip flop is also a clock to the second flip flop which is b right so now qb that is the output of this flip flop b is dependent upon the clock which is provided by qa and not the original clock so we are not going to follow this clock for qb we are going to be considering qa as the clock for qb right so this signal of qa is considered as clock for qb and again qb is also negatively edge triggered so it will be activated only on the negative edges of qa so let me just mark those negative edges so this is the first one this is the second one this is the third and this is the fourth right so again starting qb from 0 it's going to stay 0 until the first negative edge which is still over here so qa is considered as a clock right so this is the first negative edge so at this negative edge qb is going to go high and it will stay high till the next negative edge of qa which is still over here and then again it will go low and then again high so let me just complete this cycle so now we've got the idea how qb is fluctuating right 
or QB is toggling. So this is the signal diagram for QB. Now again, QB that is the output of the second flip flop B is provided as clock to the C flip flop. So for QC, QB is acting as a clock, right? So QC will react only to QB's clock si signals or QB's signal at the negative edge. So again, marking negative edge of QB. So this is the first negative edge and this is the second one. So starting QC from zero, it is going to stay zero till the first negative edge of QB and then go high and then stay high till the next negative edge and get back low again. Okay, so this is the output diagram in the term of signals on the clock cycle diagram chart. So as you can see at every phase or every output phase QA, QB and QC, the time period is getting doubled, right? That is, this is the time period for the clock signal that was being provided over here to A. Then the time period of QA is double that of that clock, right? So from the graph itself, you can see the time period of QB is again double of QA and time period of QC is again double of QB. So every time the time period is doubling and frequency is getting halved. So this is what we saw in the previous video also. However, we are not interested in that time period and frequency right now. We are just trying to understand how exactly the values are going to be counted by this by this asynchronous counter. So let's try to track the output on the truth table now. Okay, so let's see during clock cycle zero, that is this clock we are tracking now. At the zeroth cycle, what were the values of QC, QB and QA? Okay, so in this phase, in this small phase, that is the first cycle of the clock, what were the values of QA? QA was zero, right? It was zero throughout this cycle. So we write down zero over here. What was QB? QB was also zero, you can see over here. And what was QC? QC was again zero. So you have to write down over here and over here and not below. I just made that mistake. Anyways, moving ahead, let's see clock cycle one now. So let's see what happens in this phase. Now in this phase, you can see QA has become one. So write down QA as one. You can see QB is still zero in this first clock cycle. So write down zero and QC is again zero. Similarly, if you track all these values, let me just quickly do that because it will just waste time. You just have to see the clock cycle and see the value of QA, QB and QC. So for second, you can see QA has become zero. QB is high, that is one. And QC is still zero in this period. For this, you can see that QA is high. QB is also high, but QC is still zero. For the fourth cycle, you can see that QA is zero. QB is also zero, but here QC has become one that is high. Similarly, you'll get this output one zero one 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 zero. And in the last cycle, you'll see that everything is high in this seventh cycle. You'll see QA is high. QB is high and QC is also high. Now, if you see the truth table, you can see these digital values. These values represent their decimal numbers. So triple zero stands for zero. Zero zero one stands for decimal one. Zero one zero stands for decimal value of two. Zero one one stands for decimal value three. And then this is four, five, that is this is four, five, six and seven. So you can see that with every clock pulse, which is provided initially to A, we are counting these values starting from zero to seven. And the reason why we can count only eight values starting from zero through seven is because we are taking only three flip flops. So the maximum it can count is two raised to three, which is eight. So starting from zero to seven, or if you're counting from one to seven, it would be two raised to three minus one. So depending upon the number of flip flops, you can tell how many values you can count. And since this is an asynchronous counter, you can see that every output is provided as a clock to the next connected flip flop. So yeah, this was the working of three bit asynchronous up counter and we used the JK flip flop, which were neg negatively edge triggered. We also saw the entire clock cycle diagram and traced all the values of QA, QB and QC. That is the output of three different JK flip flops. And we also saw from the truth table how the values are counted actually. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood this concept. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments that you like this video, share it with your friends. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel guys, make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.